guys, it's Tori and I'm so happy to be filming a video. It's been about a month since I actually filmed a video just because I already had footage for the past few videos that I've been putting up from my Christmas break and I just, this week has just been a rough one. I haven't gotten much sleep. My upstairs neighbors at the beginning of this week decided to stay up till five in the morning and caused me to do so too and I'm one that I need my sleep didn't get it and that caused me to have anxiety which caused me to not get great sleep the next couple of nights as well plus i had three tests it's just been chaotic so i've just been like i am so looking forward to filming a video because it's just such a creative outlet for me it enables me to kind of relieve stress focus on something other than what i've been focusing on so Anyway, as you can tell by the title, this is both my January wrap up as well as a book haul. I just don't have time to do an individual book haul, but I did recently receive and purchase several books that I want to talk about. So we're just going to combine these and hopefully this video isn't too long. Let's just get into the books I read in January. I had a very good reading month. In January, I was able to read complete five books and then I have a few that I'm about halfway or more than halfway through. Four out of the five that I completed were classics. One was a nonfiction and then of the three, no, there's four that I'm currently reading. Two of them are nonfiction. One is a classic and one is a fantasy. So let's kick it off with the first book I completed in 2020, which was A Laodicean by Thomas Hardy, which I ended up giving three out of five stars. This follows George Somerset, who is an architect, as he is hired by this woman named Paula Power, who recently inherited a castle after her father passed away and she asks him to help her renovate it and they develop a romantic relationship however there's also a man named Captain DeStancy who also is interested in Paula and things go on from there. It's one of Hardy's more plot driven novels which definitely helped to keep me engaged the entire time. It was definitely one of the more engaging at least plot wise um, Hardy's that I've read. However, I just felt like the character development was severely lacking. I did not, uh, honestly, Paula just annoyed me, which she is the Laodicean of the title. And if you don't know, a Laodicean means that someone's very like lukewarm about their beliefs. They're not super assertive. So <laughs> she's like that in every aspect of her life, really. She's like that with relationships. She's like that in her beliefs of any kind, not just religiously. She just is very passive about everything to the point where it's just annoying and almost unkind like George there's a point where George has declared his love for her and she just refuses like she is okay with him liking her and she flirts with him and clearly has feelings for him but she like refuses to say I love you back and she refuses to assertively acknowledge her feelings she just kind of is playing with him and it's one of those things where you can tell she's not doing it on purpose but it just made it really hard to understand her motivations and so I would have liked a little bit more to spend time in Paula's head to understand her better which we didn't get and the other characters were similar I just weren't wasn't able to really get to know them there was one character that I did enjoy who's the villain of the story Dare who is very fascinating because he's very cunning and very clever but his history kind of has made him that way and so it's very interesting to see how society and just his status in life has caused him to become the person he is in this story so I really liked him but yeah it was probably like of the Thomas Hardy's I've read like middle of the road it wasn't at the bottom but it definitely wasn't at the top so definitely middling Thomas Hardy but definitely a good enjoyable read next I read an amazing book we have always lived in the castle by Shirley Jackson which I ended up giving five out of five stars I absolutely loved this this follows uh, I always forget the main character's name, Mary. Mary Catherine Blackwood and her sister Constance, as well as their uncle, who live in this small town in this very old house. And we're told at the beginning of the story that the rest of their family has all died, um, that they were poisoned, and that everybody thinks Constance did it, the older sister did it. And so they're very ostracized in this community, tr mistreated. And you just kind of follow their experiences. It just had this nice, eerie, dark feeling. It kind of gave me Adam's family vibe in some ways not exactly but there was some connections I made with the Adams family and I just found it to be 
very engaging even though it wasn't a super plot driven novel at all it was definitely more character driven and in my head when I think about the ending I'm like that should have been unsatisfying because just the way it ended would unsatisfy me in other stories but the way it was done in this just felt right and I didn't feel unsatisfied and it was just amazing I highly recommend this it's very short so definitely a quick read and especially if you've been interested in Shirley Jackson at all I think this is a great book to pick up um, I would say I feel like the lottery is almost a better place to start with her because it's a short story and it was her first introduction into being a big deal I guess <laughs> that was a weird way to put it but anyway it gives you a taste of her writing style and then going into this you're able to more fully understand and enjoy it so anyway definitely really loved this and highly recommend it i then picked up the adventures of tom bombadil by J.R.R. tolkien i don't have much to say about this i read it in one sitting it's really just a bunch of poems and short stories that would have been told by hobbits in middle earth really the actual like story stuff only goes up through there it's like that much is the actual book and the rest is just commentary on the story so it was very short i only skimmed the commentary so it was fun don't really have much to say about it it was three out of five stars i just enjoyed it it was entertaining to read the little snippets of middle earth stories and legends so yeah next i had another five out of five star read and that was howard's end by em forrester which i gave like I said, five out of five stars. I really, really love this. This is an Edwardian classic. So it was written early 1900s. I don't remember exactly what year, but it follows three families, the Schlegels who are like upper middle class kind of in the fact that they don't have a ton of money, but they've inherited it all. So they don't have to necessarily work a ton. They come from a family name. So they kind of had that aristocracy aspect, but that's kind of dying out at this point. Then we followed the Wilcoxes, who are not from like a well-known family name, but they are very wealthy. And so they're more upper middle class in that way. And then we follow the Basts, who are lower middle class, who they work and he's a bank clerk, but they're very poor. They struggle to stay alive essentially because they don't make much money. And we follow these families as they interact with each other and have an influence on each other and it's such a good book. I would say it's maybe more, it may, it's probably slightly below We Have Always Lived in the Castle as far as my five star rating goes just because there were some points where the writing and like philosophizing within the writing was just I didn't love it as much. There was just something about the writing style that kind of bothered me, but I don't really know exactly what it was. So it kind of hindered my enjoyment, but overall I loved the story. I loved the characters. The characters just felt so real to me. They were very flawed, but all of them had something that you could appreciate about them. And you know, there were some that I liked better than others, but none of them were like, okay, definitely everybody's going to like this person. There's maybe one that most, if not everybody would probably dislike a lot. It's like with real people when you, some people get along with certain personalities and value and people who hold certain values better than others. And so it was really fun in that way. They just felt very real. I have said that like five times, but that's what I have to say about it. It was just very relatable and very, like I could see myself being friends with these people. It was just very well written and I'm excited to read more by Ian Forrester in the future. And then my final book that I was able to complete this month was Sister Queens by Julia Fox, which I ended up giving a four out of five stars. This is a nonfiction following the story of Catherine of Aragon as well as her sister Juana who was Queen of Spain, although she was kind of pushed out of that role due to unfortunate circumstances and power-hungry individuals in her family. But it was a very, very good book. I always struggle to know how to rate nonfiction because I just haven't read a lot of it. And so I don't really know what makes nonfiction good. I'm like, I mean, it's giving me facts and I know, I feel like I'm smart enough to know that a lot of this might be assumption and that some of this has no historical backing just because we can't know everything and in order to create a book that's fully fledged and we're able to get into the people themselves in history like you kind of have to make assumptions based on what we do know so I thought it was really good my only complaint was a little bit of like repetitiveness in the writing that I didn't necessarily love. I just, especially with Juana, I just feel like because there's so little known about her due to her circumstances, 
that the author just kind of repeated the same ideas over and over and over again and I was just like yes I understand she was portrayed to look crazy she didn't get along with her jailers so to speak so it just got a little redundant and was I was like it this a lot of this could have been cut out but I understand why it's like that it's just a little annoying to listen to I was listening to it on audiobook so anyway it was really good and I'm excited to continue my project of learning about all six of the wives of Henry VIII moving on to the books I'm currently working on the audiobook I'm currently listening to is the creation of Anne Boleyn by Susan Bordeaux which I am absolutely loving. I'm actually almost done. I have like two and a half hours left and it's really, really good. It's interesting because it's not going through her life story. It's more discussing how we've, how she's been portrayed throughout time and how much, like how little we know and how that enables people to create different ideas about her and where some of the legends about her come from and things like that and so it's really interesting of the wives Anne Boleyn was definitely the one I knew the most about so it's nice to listen to a book that is describing her the different opinions about her rather than and the different portrayals of her rather than just discussing her life when I already know at least a little bit about it so my next book that I'm currently working on is Emma by Jane Austen I am very close to being done I'm about at the third volume at this point and I'm really really liking it this is a reread and it's just as good the second time I just love it so much. I love Mr. Knightley. I think Emma's development over the story is one of the best in the Jane Austens I've read. She just grows a lot and I really appreciate that. Yes, excited to continue with this. I'm also reading The Immortal Life of Henrietta Locks by Rebecca Skloot, which follows the story of Henrietta Locks, whose cells were taken by researchers in the 50s when she had cancer and they survived and they were able to create more and more and do a lot of research. They were able to discover a cure for polio through those cells. They were able to discover many cures, many different treatments for cancer. It's done amazing things, but it was taken without her permission and without her family knowing. So there's a lot of ethical questions that go along with it. So this follows both her life and her family's lives, as well as what research has been done with her cells and I'm really really enjoying this. And finally I'm also working on Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Honestly I've put this on pause so I could kind of finish those other two because the Henrietta Locks book I'm actually working on for biology and Emma I want to finish before the movie comes out so I'm focusing more on those right now. So this is kind of on the back burner but I've started it and I've made it about a hundred pages in so I thought I'd mention it and it's really good this is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling and I like Naomi Novik's writing and I'm definitely enjoying this so that is my wrap up for the month for those of you who don't like book hauls thanks for watching I will see you next time and for those of you who are interested in what books I've received slash purchased this month I will show them off now. First of all, my friend Felicia discovered a beautiful copy of Thomas Hardy's The Return of the Native amongst her books at home over Christmas break and asked me if I wanted it and I was like absolutely yes. So she got it for me and it's gorgeous and I love it. The leather and gold foiling on the edges and it's gorgeous and I've heard really good things about this one. All I know about it is that it's about a small community called Egdon Heath and someone who's been away, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, comes back and romantic entanglements ensue. And that's all I know, but I've heard it's one of Hardy's better ones, so I'm excited to pick it up whenever I do. Next, I have a French classic, which I'm really excited to get, and that is Indiana by George Sand. I learned about George Sand actually in a music class. She was the lover of one of the composers we discussed. Sorry, I can't remember who it was. I don't have my notes with me, but she apparently wore pants. She was very like independent and strong-willed writer. Um, who had many many male lovers. She was just very her own person. This was during the 1800s in France and I just found myself being, being very interested in her so I decided to see what books I could find of hers that were still in print and this was one that was. So I finally picked it up. It's a very short. I was expecting it to be a lot longer so I'm excited to read it. I believe it follows a woman who marries a much older man and ends up falling in love with her neighbor 
And then I have several Victorian classics all by female authors and I just realized recently that I don't have very many Victorian novels that I own. Like I have so many I want to read but I don't own a lot of them and I honestly don't own hardly any female Victorian writers that I haven't read yet. Like I have some that I have read but of the ones I haven't read I don't own very many female Victorian authors. So. Finally picked up a few just because I got good deals on textbooks this month when I was purchasing them if I got one or two other cheaper books. So I was like, me as well. Anyway, so first of all, I have Lady Oddly Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. I know that this is a sensation novel and pretty much nothing else, but I've heard great things and that it's very engaging and I'm excited to pick it up at some point. I then picked up Ruth by Elizabeth Gaskell. I'm technically, I've technically started North and South. I didn't mention it before because that one's definitely like, I'm going to finish everything else I'm reading before I get back into that, but I just wanted to kind of try it out and I ended up one night when I was trying it out just to see if it was one that I really wanted to start soon. It pulled me right in and I ended up reading several pages and then I was like, nope, I need to finish everything else I'm reading before I can pick this up, but I'm kind of started that. Anyway, so I know I like Elizabeth Gaskell's writing and this was one that I, I was like, if I like North and South, if I like the writing style, I will pick this one up next because it's been compared to Tess of the D'Urbervilles, which is my favorite book, one of my favorite books of all time, and in that it follows a fallen woman and I just feel like I want to read it really bad. So picked it up. I then picked up Hester by Margaret Oliphant. I picked this up because Kate over on her channel Kate Howe actually announced that for February and March we, they were going to be reading this for her Read Along Most Victorian series. Um, I haven't been able to participate in the past three books just because I haven't owned it and I've wanted to focus on other books and I wasn't really interested in the books like they I'm interested in them but I would rather start with other books if that makes sense than what they were reading but when she mentioned this one I was like that sounds really good and again I really want more Vic female Victorian authors in my personal library so I decided to just grab it and I'm really excited to read it I all I know about it is it's about a woman Catherine Vernon that's who it is who actually owns a bank. She's single, never got married, and she owns a bank, a very successful bank. And for the Victorian time period, that sounds insane. So I'm very excited to pick this up at some point. And then last, I finally picked up Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. I read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall last year and I absolutely loved it. It was one of my favorites of the year. And I just have been dying to pick up Agnes Grey, but I really wanted it in this edition so it would match my Tenant of Wildfell Hall and found it for a really good price and was just finally like, I'm just gonna get it. I'm just gonna do it. And especially because I don't have any Bronte sister books that I own that I haven't read yet. It's just time that I get one. So got it and I'm so excited to read it. And last we have a nonfiction book that is freaking huge and that is The Brontes by Juliet Barker. This is called the Bronte Bible by many a person just it has all the information you could possibly want on the family and I'm excited to read it I don't know when I'm going to do it because it's so big it might be over the summer when I read all my big books I'm really excited to pick it up because I just have such a fascination with the Brontes as so many people do and I'm very curious to learn more about them, especially Anne Bronte, because I feel like I know very little about her and she's quite possibly going to be considered my favorite of the Bronte sisters as far as writing goes, so we'll see. And that is it for my wrap up slash book haul. Thanks again so much for watching. I hope you've had a wonderful reading month. Let me know down below some of the books you've read recently as I would love to know or received that you're excited about as I would also love to know that. And I will talk to you next time. Bye!